Let's pray. Um, dear Lord, we come before you this morning to thank you for your many blessings. We ask that you will bless our worship with our Holy Spirit and that we will be all strengthened and encouraged by your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The uh, sermon title is God's Will, and it sounds very serious. <laughs> but I don't be really, well, you'll find out. <laughs> uh, today's passage, yes is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. I think you might have heard this a lot, and maybe you memorized it too. I don't know. Did you? Anybody has, have, uh, has memorized this from church or home or classroom? No? Okay. Let's just read it all together. Ready? Go. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Actually, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit, and I also have a picture of myself <laughs> that I might not have shared even with my sons. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what is this year? <laughs> my, uh, my students always ask me, you know, how old are you? Are you 60? <laughs> they see my white hair, they're like, maybe you're 70. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever, <laughs> I'm 100. And uh, they always ask my age, and maybe today some smart kids can just guess my age. But anyways, in 1988, yes, I was living then, <laughs> uh, that is the year that our uh, nation, Korea, they had their first and last so far uh, Olympics. Right? In Korea, do you guys know about this history? <laughs> yeah, you all know, right? 1988, Pai uh, Pai Olympic, we called it. And that was the year that I went to the States for the first time. That's why I'm showing this. And I couldn't even see the Olympics in my own country because I had to leave in March. And our, you know, Korea was very busy getting prepared for Olympics. And that's when I followed my parents to go to America. <laughs> and I was starting high school <laughs> um, and I was very lonely in America to be honest because even though I did learn English a little bit back then we started learning English in middle school and I studied up to second grade of middle school which is kind of like our seventh grade eighth grade something like that so um, I was only learning very simple like maybe our school's second grade English, or even not that, maybe first grade English. I was learning something like that, right? Um, how are you? Hello, Tarsu. I was learning those things, and then I went to America, and people were asking me questions, you know, they were saying hello, and they were saying blah, 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 blah. I had no idea what they were saying. <laughs> and uh, I thought, because I kind of was not too bad in school until that age in Korea. I was like, panjang, panjang, all of that. And I thought, I'm like, good. And I went to the States and I was almost like a dumb. <laughs> didn't understand anything, couldn't do much because I didn't understand anything. Of course, I mean, math I could do because it's just numbers, but still I struggled. And I was like missing my friends so much. And back then, of course, nowadays, you can just do cacao talk, you can do anything, right? You can just talk with anyone uh, some, somewhere else in the world. But back then, it was, yes, Latinin. <laughs> it was hard. So what did I do? I was writing letters every day. <laughs> I love writing letters. I, even in Korea, when I was like in the same country as my friends, we were writing letters. That was something big, I guess, for girls back then. So I was like writing letter every night, even in Korea, when I would meet that friend next day. <laughs> so we were like exchanging letters every day. And I don't know, we always talked, we chatted all the time, but we still had something to say on the letters. And that was like my hobby or I just enjoyed it. Um, and I, of course, when I went to the States, I, I just wrote letters. And my friends, these are actually from my friends from church. They were also writing to me. Every time I write, they would write me back. And I actually, these are just a very few, but I have a box full of letters still. And somehow my mom's really good at keeping things. She doesn't throw things out, so I just have them still. And um, I just think of those times, I was so thankful that I had those friends that I could write to. But you had to wait a long time <laughs> to get their letters back. When you write a letter, you had to go to post office. You had to get all these uh, 
you know, uh, what is it, uh, stamps. And I know these days you guys don't even know what stamps are. <laughs> and we had to, you know, uh, send it and it go, it takes about, how, how long, I forgot, but it took long time. And then when my friends get the letter and writes and send it back, maybe it took like a month <laughs> to go and <laughs> come it back. And, and that was what I was waiting for every day. Um, and the picture that I was talking about, this is me. <laughs> Maybe I didn't change much. What do you think? <laughs> and I, this is my uh, high school. Do I look like Peter? Or Peter looks like me? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, I think I didn't change much. But anyway, that was my senior year. Yes. Uh, and yes, I did graduate from high school. <laughs> so that's that. Anyways, why did I talk about letters? <laughs> For a reason. Um, we just read 1 Thessalonians, and that is one of the books from New Testament, right, from the Bible. And that book was written by Paul. And we don't know if Paul looked just like that, but uh, we had Paul here too. <laughs> but um, this Paul was, you guys all know about Paul from the Bible, right? Uh, if you, yes, learn stories from Bible, you would know Paul. He wrote many letters, actually. Not like me, he didn't write letters to his friends. Of course, to his friends too, I'm sure, but mostly to other Christians that he preached, that he uh, taught. Um, he was writing letters. And we uh, traditionally Christians believe that 13 books of the New Testament are written by Paul. But a lot of scholars say something else, but I'm not a theologian, so I'll just say that. <laughs> so anyways, one of those, we have First Thessalonians. And what is Thessalonian? It's not English. It doesn't sound like English, not like Korean, not like Chinese. What is it? It's actually a name of the people, like Korean, right? We're Korean, or American, or Chinese, or Japanese, or, you know, we call ourselves those names for who we are. And Thessalonians were the people who lived in Thessalonica. And that's uh, part of Greece of today. And that is where it is, Thessalonica. And this is the names of the, you know, Bible time. And Paul was writing the letter from Corinth. And uh, he, if you know Paul, you know, uh, after he changed to Paul from Saul, right? He met Jesus and he changed, right? And he was going to all the places. He was doing missions, right? He was like first missionary, going to many different places to tell about Jesus, right? And Thessalonica was one of them. And he was able to teach them, and Jesus, uh, God was working, and they believed in Jesus, and a lot of people uh, started church there, and they were gathering together to um, talk about Jesus, to live out the faith, and here, um, here's the timeline, and the purpose, why First Thessalonians were, was written, and if you see, I guess younger kids don't know AD, BC, those things, but anyways, that's after Jesus' death, Chua and Lena. So what happened here? <laughs> I love you girls, yes. So Paul was con uh, conversion, what does that mean? Paul was changed into a different person. He's the same person, but his heart was changed, right? He was Saul, and then because he met Jesus, he was changed, and then he was busy professing his, confessing his uh, faith to everybody. And he wrote this letter after about how long? Matt, second graders, <laughs> about how long after he changed? Three years. Huh? Three years? What? <laughs> okay, I know it's, uh, you don't really get timeline, but about 15 years later, right, he was writing the letter to Thessalonica, to the Thessalonians, and he was actually martyred, means he was killed um, in Rome after about 15, another 15 years. Uh, he wrote this report. Uh, he got a report from Timothy, actually. We have Timothy here, too. Where's Timothy? Hello, Timothy. <laughs> Timothy, you want to... Too long, maybe. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to read. Um, so then he actually got a report from Timothy because he loved Thessalonians. He was so happy with Thessalonians, but he had to be kicked out because a lot of people didn't like what Paul was doing. They didn't believe in what Paul was saying. And a lot of people, even Jewish, right? People of God, they thought that Paul was the false witness. And they were saying, you are wrong and you should be not here. And uh, so then they kicked him out. Um, and that's why he had to send Timothy to Thessalonica so that Thessalonians could uh, 
talk about what's going on with their church. And Timothy came back and told Paul, you know, they're doing so well. You know, more people are believing in Jesus and they're very happy in Jesus. And, and he was giving all that good report. And Paul was so happy. But he also heard how there were some unexpected deaths. And he wanted to encourage them. And he wanted to remind them what it is to believe in Jesus, right? And he was reassuring them. Um, and he was talking about how Jesus will come back. And he was talking about how um, himself and Silas and Timothy were the preachers of gospel. So he was writing this letter uh, with these purposes. And he was also talking about how it is not easy to be Christian at that time because they were persecuted. Paul was persecuted and later dies, right? And Thessalonian church was also persecuted, right? You know what persecute means? Yeah? Do you think Christians are being persecuted today? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are all in Christian church. I don't think anyone here will say, why do you believe in Jesus? That is wrong. I don't think nobody will do that because we're in Christian church, uh, school. But, um, you know, a lot of people don't believe in Christianity or they actually hate Christianity for it being not right. <laughs> there are a lot of actually churches even that are saying they are professing Christians but doing things that is different. And, and uh, there are, you know, a lot of controversies and a lot of troubles. And even for true Christians, a lot of people think that we are not doing the right thing and they think we are believing in something that is true, not true, right? So all of these things were happening in Thessalonians, uh, to Thess Thessalonians. We'll just kind of go through like the topics. So the first was thanksgiving for the Thessalonians faith. So Paul started out saying, I'm so grateful for your faith. I am so happy that you're still believing in Jesus and doing very well. And then he talked about, if you go down, yes, thank you so much. Uh, uh, we can go to the next chapter. He talks about all of that. You can read this by yourself later on. Only five chapters, okay? Um, next chapter. And then he talks about how he, uh, his ministry was um, in Thessalonica, to Thessalonians. He explains about what was happening, right? And I was doing this to you. He was reminding them his ministry. And then he talks about how really he, he really misses Thessalonians. Maybe that's what I did when I was writing letters. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> uh, so that's what he was saying. This is just like, you know, love letter to each other, right? So Paul was writing that. And next, chapter 3, then he talks about um, how Timothy came back and gave that encouraging report saying that they are doing very well. So he's saying, I'm so happy that you guys are doing very well. And Timothy's report was very good, right? Brought good news about your faith and love. And he's explaining about all of that, right? And he's blessing them. And then next chapter already, chapter 4. And then he talks about uh, living, how you should live to please God. Right? This is the way that you should live. Right? He's giving advices because he loves them. Right? And uh, God's will. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. All of these good teachings that he was giving to Thess Thessalonians. And then, and then he talks about believers who have died. The people that have died that they didn't expect to die. And I'm sure maybe from persecution, maybe from uh, sickness, but there were some death. And of course, Thessalonians were very confused and hurt. And Paul was talking about how you, we believe in Jesus who is who raised again, right? Who resurrected. And that's the one that we believe in. So you don't have to be so sad. I know I understand your sadness, but please let's um, trust in him, right? Uh, we will also be alive again, okay? And he will come back. Jesus will come back. That's what, uh, that's the message he's giving. And then we go to the last chapter of First, First Thessalonians that we have our um, main verses of today. The day of the Lord is coming. He's talking about that, right? Times and dates we do not need to write to you, but you know very well that he's coming. And we don't know when. He's going to come like a thief in the night, meaning that he can come any day, right? Um, and then final instructions. This is where we go into our verse today. And he says, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard. So he's talking about all these things, live in peace, love each other. And then, 
Today's passage that we read together. Say it again. Verse 16. Ready? Go. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ. Amen. And of course, it's not like only that verse that we have. We have all this information. And he's saying all these good things that he's... Uh, these Thessalonians have to know. But he's saying this and he says, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So then he says, rejoice always. And you know my name is Joyce. And my name, I don't know if you noticed, my letters, it didn't have Joyce Kang. It had different name, Hesok Kang. That was my actually name before. My original name is um, Hesok. And uh, when I was in the States, people couldn't call me, uh, you know, pronunciation was not correct for my name because they couldn't pronounce H-Y-E. How would you pronounce that, right? There's no he in, a, in English. So they would call me, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they were calling me, hey, Suk, hey, Sok. <laughs> so I was like, I, I mean, I love my name, but I just wanted to change it to something that people would you know, recognize right away and call. So then I was thinking, I was praying, I want a different name, but I want a name, something that could represent me or something that I want to be like. And then there came Joyce. And I know a lot of Christians back then also had named Joyce, but not because I'm always joyful, but because I wanted to be joyful all the time, because that's what God is telling us to do. God is saying, rejoice always. And this doesn't mean, don't ever misunderstand. This doesn't mean even if you're sad, even if you're hurt, you should just laugh <laughs> and ignore all your feelings. That's never what God is saying. That's not what God is saying. God doesn't say, I don't care about your feeling. God doesn't say, you know, if you're hurt, you should be okay. That's not our God, right? God cares. God loves. And he says, rejoice always. How can you do that? If you're getting F on your test, how can you rejoice? <laughs> if your friend said to you, I'm not your friend anymore, how can you rejoice? If your teacher called you, oh, I think you're in trouble today. You will get the merry point. How can you rejoice, right? But still, Bible says rejoice always. There's no because, uh, uh, if this happens, rejoice. It doesn't say that. It just says rejoice always. And there's a reason. Because. Why? Because we trust in Jesus, who's dead but now alive again. And we are having this faith in somebody who's going to take us to be with him forever. And even now, he's with us. We're not believing in some statue. We're not believing in some good person. We're believing in the true living God who's with us even this minute, right? And we know this Anything that's happening right now is temporary. Maybe somebody you love dies. Maybe your pet dies. I, I remember my class kids also said, my pet died, I'm so sad. And, and it is hard, it is hard. Jesus also cries with us. But then we can still rejoice saying, I am joyful, Lord, because I know you've created this day and I know this will not last forever. Right? This, this hurt, hurting feeling, this pain that I have in my body, this doesn't last forever. So I can still be joyful in you. And he says, pray continually. Because we can't rejoice all the time. It's very hard. He says, pray continually. You just continue to pray. What does that mean? Do we always have to do one, two, three, and pray? <laughs> that doesn't mean that. Pray continually doesn't mean. And for class one, two, I always do one, two, <laughs> because it's hard to get their attention. But when we pray, we don't have to do that. You can just talk to him even now. God, this is long. Can we stop? <laughs> or, you know, I love you. Or, this is hard. I'm hurt. You know, you can say that to God. Continually. You can talk to him. Communicate. Um, this is my test result, Lord. I'm very sad. But, Lord, I trust in you. I want to do my best. Help me. Right? We can pray continually. And he says, give thanks in all circumstances. The, all the circumstances that I was talking about, even when I was like crying at home the, when I was younger, at, about your age, you know, I felt like I, I can't understand anything, I don't know anything, and other people are looking at me like, oh, she doesn't know anything. I felt bad, and I was very sad, especially when I went to church, because there were all these Korean American kids who were second generation kids. They were born in America, they didn't understand Korean, and they looked like me, but they were so different. 
So in the school, I was okay because they looked different too. <laughs> so I could just hide, hide myself and just smile. But in church, you know, we look the same and they are so different. They don't understand me. So I felt even worse. So some days, even though my father was a pastor there, I said to my mom, I don't want to go to church. <laughs> and there was something called lock-in, like you stay overnight. It was kind of like a retreat. And my mom was very, you know, she also had a hard time because I was like at that age where Sachungi, we all say, I, I really didn't want to go. And I was crying, no, no, <laughs> there's nobody. And I don't want to go. And it's no, it has no meaning. You know, I was doing that. And even those times. He says, give thanks in all, all circumstances, which is hard. <laughs> but he says, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is not just God's will saying, you know, you have to do this. I'm the God. You should listen. I said, do this. So do it. Our God is not like that again. Don't ever misunderstand our God. Our God says, this is for you in Christ Jesus. With Christ Jesus, you can do all of these. Even though it's hard, even though you are struggling, you are coming with me, and I'm with you, and this is my will. And when you saw the title for today, maybe you were thinking, oh, God's will? That means, like, what's God's plan for me? Am I going to be a doctor? Am I going to be a teacher? Maybe you were thinking something like that. I don't know. But when we talk about God's will, God doesn't really say in the Bible, okay, I want you to be lawyer. Or, I mean, it's not what's written in the Bible. That would be wonderful. But... When he says, this is my will, he talks about these things. Everyday life things. Everyday my heart things. Right? And he says, rejoice, pray, and give thanks. And that is God's will for us in Jesus Christ.